Cheers. Cheers. So good to be here. I'm Anna Burton with Napa Green, and we are so thrilled and so grateful that we are going to be holding a Napa Thrives Gala right here at Raymond Vineyards on June 25th. It's coming right up to raise, our goal is to raise over $500,000 to directly support sustainability and climate action in our community and in our industry. And we're so grateful to you for hosting that event. And we will do it, we will achieve we will it. it. We need your help to come raise your paddle. It's gonna be a fun night always at Raymond Vineyards in the heart of Santa Lina, one of the most oldest and finest wineries in the heart of Napa. Everybody will be here to help raise Napa to the next level. Absolutely, come out and join us please. June 25th, Napa Thrives. And Napa Green. And Napa Green. Cheers. Cheers. Dear friends, we are with the fabulous Anna Britton. You've met her several times on JCB Live. Today, another episode talking about the environment. She's the executive director of Napa Green. We're so fortunate to have such talent, beauty, charm, and an incredible program based out of multiple pillars. So Anna, would you remind us, Napa Green, its philosophy, yep. the pillars, and what we'll be discussing today? Okay, big question. Well, Napa Green is a nonprofit that facilitates sustainability certification for wineries and vineyards here in Napa County, including, of course, Raymond Vineyards, where we are today. But a lot of people ask and have asked over the years, okay, sustainability, what does that mean? It's a little amorphous, it's a little confusing. And so I came up with this idea of the six pillars of sustainable wine growing leadership, that there are really six pillars that any leading sustainability program is working on or should be working on. And so we're walking through these six pillars in these six episodes. We've talked about energy efficiency. Now we're gonna talk about waste management and green purchasing. Later, we'll talk about water efficiency and we'll talk about integrated pest management and excellent organic and biodynamic practices like Boise Collection does. Thank and you. we'll talk about social equity and diversity. And then we're going to talk about how all of that rolls into climate action and regenerative farming. So those are the six pillars that we're walking through and we're going to dig into the second one today. And those pillars are such an amazing guideline for all of us as individuals in our homes or winery owners or anyone dealing with agriculture, viticulture, and mother nature, who is our best friend. So today, we'll be discussing something we adore. Yes, and I'm Anna, excited about this. A little surprise for you, the most luxurious can in the history of Napa Valley. This is a Napa Valley Oakville, Oakville AVA, from Oakville wine merchant Cabernet Sauvignon. So we're very excited. You could see it's in the can. Yeah. And it's amazing because it's a 250 ml. Yep. You can see it's smaller than my hands. And that's the cool part of it. From And it's a beautifully branded. Yeah. Thank you. Great texture. Feel it. Ooh. Ooh. It looks a little leathery. That's it. Yeah. So like the wines. And when you look at this, dear friend, whether you go on a picnic, whether you're outdoors, whether you're in the stadium, whether you're on a boat, wherever you are, or in an airplane for that matter, or in the garden where we are, you take this incredible little can, you have an amazing glass of wine. It's a third of a bottle. Yeah. It's priced at $65, which is a third of our $200 regular Oakville yeah. from Oakville Wine Merchant. So yeah. Yeah. compelling. And what does it do Cheers. to the Thank environment? You. Well, this is such a key piece of what we work with our winery members on is the supply chain. What you purchase really matters. So it's not just about here on site and how you manage your recycling and your composting, which we'll talk more about, but even more in terms of a winery, you need to be thinking about the things you're buying and sort of the life cycle of how those things are made and how they are distributed. And so one of the biggest things we talk about in the wine industry is the bottles. Bottles are beautiful. Bottles are so important. They can also be too heavy. There's this kind of onerous uh, association that's come up that bigger is better, that bigger bottles mean better wine. We're here to say that is not true. Exactly. And so there's a big movement in the industry right now towards lightening up, lighten up, lighten up a little, including with your bottles. And then there's a movement, a kind of subset, and we're not saying everyone should go towards wine in a can, right? But that's even more sustainable. It's so light. It means you can ship more in a smaller shipment. It means fewer shipments. It saves you money. 
And actually this product right here is infinitely recyclable. That's very, very recyclable. So is glass, and we can talk more about that. But we know for a fact that these metals get recycled more. There's more of a kind of awareness of recycling these cans, whereas only about 30% of glass ever gets recycled. And so that's another big issue in terms of the glass bottles. So this right here, I love we get to try this because this, this aspect of purchasing your bottles, maybe cans, they're even starting to make some really ultra premium wines, believe it or not, in boxes. I'm a little skeptical, but some people are doing some premium wines in box. And this piece is a huge piece. When you think about wine, we're shipping wine, it's heavy. And if we can reduce those shipments, it reduces the carbon footprint, it reduces and it increases the recyclability and all of the things. The three R's, yes. very important. Yeah. And it's really fundamental that all of us as producers think about all those alternatives of convenience as well on how we ultimately going to enjoy the wine. So it could be like this, yeah. an ultra premium wine. Remember, it's a $200 bottle of wine, yeah. special occasion, but we make the special occasion more convenient and current yeah. into a can. Imagine, which is what we're going to do with Anna today. We're going to have a lovely pizza. We're going to go in the garden and romantically, I'm going to look at those red hair flow in the wind of Napa Valley <laughs> and enjoy a stellar bottle of wine. Yes, it is. And imagine if you're on a backpack on a picnic and you take this and you know it's an amazing wine and yep. you know you're never going to have breakage on top yep. of it. It's yep. safe. Yep. Better for your back too. You're not carting around a whole bottle of wine. I take it to the beach. That's where I would be taking this. So what do you think of the quality of the wine in respect to the package? I was just going to say that. I was really excited to, to try this because I wanted to see, does it hold up? That's what everyone's asking in terms of a can. Does it hold up? Is the wine maintaining its same character? And it does. This is absolutely an incredible Oakville Cabernet. So it does hold up. It's my first ultra premium wine I've had out of a can. So we've had a first here today. That's right. So, Anna, explain us really when we think of packaging, as you described so well. Carbon footprint, how do we measure it? How can we account for it? Because I think what is important even as a consumer, you're in your home, we should have bonuses for reducing the amount of waste we have. We know we have millions of containers going around the globe yes. that don't find a home unless we subsidize a country to take it and they often drop it in the ocean or put it in yeah. odd areas that manage pollution, illness, disease, all kinds of things. So yeah. explain us the whole the chain. Yeah. When you throw it in the trash can, it does not just go away, right? It has to go somewhere. It starts somewhere else then. Yeah, and it starts, it starts before it got to you and it has to go somewhere after you. And everything that ends up in the landfill is there it is aging and it gives off methane which is a gas that's 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide wow. so when we generate waste we're actually really increasing the emissions that are going into the atmosphere contributing to climate change so we don't want to do this on so many different levels um, so it really starts i mean a, i think when you're talking about how do you measure it i wanted to talk about of course we have to think about here on site or yeah. at home there's the most basic level of you need to be recycling everything you can right put your glass wine bottles in there recycling that's very important because glass is infinitely recyclable and we're actually running out of the sand that they use to make glass so we need to be recycling that glass and i know that you purchase all of almost all of all of your glass is made in california mm -hmm. out of 50 percent recycled glass so this is one thing that Thank raymond for noticing. is really thinking about and it's yeah. more expensive dear friends we know that but we have to be responsible yes. and we have to be responsible vis-a-vis -vis ourselves yes. our children remember we borrow the land from our children. And if we don't take the steps, no one will. So just recycling is the basic. It's the very basic, and there's still places that don't do it. So th that starts here, and one thing that's lovely about our community is we have our waste management group, Upper Valley. They'll come out and do trainings. They'll bring all the different bins, the different signs. They'll make sure the staff is all trained. And then interestingly, and I don't know if you know this, one of the things they can provide you with is actually the greenhouse gas emissions saved I from, all of your, from all of your recycling and all wow. your composting. So when you're talking about measuring, that's one start you can make in terms of measuring. Um, but then when you're measuring, as I said, I'm going to say for wineries, what's, and we're not going to go too technical, but for wineries, what's called scope three emissions, 
which is things like packaging, purchasing, anything you're bringing in. That's the biggest piece of the emissions footprint. We know for wineries anywhere from 30 to 50% on average of emissions is from packaging and distribution. Mm. So we have to be thinking a lot about, and when you're measuring, it's complicated because you have to be thinking, where am I buying my glass from? Where is it coming from? You've already thought to not buy it from China, you're buying it from California. That hugely reduces that carbon footprint. Yeah. But you have to be thinking about all those things. Where are my labels coming from? What are they made with? Where are my capsules coming from? Are they recycled? Am I using natural cork, which can be recycled, whereas a lot of synthetic corks cannot be recycled, which people don't know. Um, a lot of the screw caps can't be That's recycled right. because of the plastic liner that they have in them. It's complex what can and can't be recycled. And it's in terms of the wine business, one of the most important things we can think about is this supply chain and the packaging and the distribution. And does it affect the quality of the wine? That's always the big question because we all as consumers are thinking, we buy something in this package, does it minimize its perception, its luxurious appeal? Does it change the taste of the wine? No, I mean, one of the things I always say, and I'll probably say on every single one of these episodes, is sustainability elevates luxury. It really elevates. <laughs> I get excited. <laughs> Plus there's pollen in the air right now. It's spring. I've been having bad allergies. But yeah, sustainability really elevates luxury. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, uh, you That's know. That's the purity of the air. The purity of the air, it is. But I will say I've had people lighten their glass. So you talk about, you know, does it change quality? And you can make an adjustment to the glass. You can lighten it up to the bottle and it's imperceptible. We worked yes. with a winery once to do this. You couldn't even tell. So it's not affecting the quality of your experience at all. And this, whereas this is an entirely different uh, vessel, but it's holding up, the wine is amazing. And so I think we're gonna see more and more experimentation with things yes. like cans, with kegs. Uh, with, I don't know about the wine in a box, but we'll give it a try. But yeah. we're going to see more and more experiments with those. Things. So advise us as far as what else can we do as consumers. A lot of us who are with us today on live are thinking, okay, how can I become a better citizen? Besides hard packaging, explain what else we could do with composting, with vegetable waste, with other ways that we have in our home that you would recommend we, we dispose differently than we do today? Yeah, I mean, it is challenging because your ability to compost or to recycle changes from state to state and sometimes from region to region. It is complex. I'm not going to say it's not complex, knowing what's recyclable or compostable in different places. But it's worth finding out. Most waste management companies, you go on their site, they're going to be really clear with you what can you put in the green waste. Yes. So here in Napa, you can put corks in the green waste and they'll be composted. You can put organic, so all your food stuff, all your leftover food, which is actually the worst source of emission if it ends up in the landfill. You can landfill. You can put all that in the green waste bin and it'll all go get composted and then that can be brought back. You know where compost is great? In the vineyard. It gets right. brought full circle. So those things, figuring out what can go where and making sure as little, absolutely little as possible of it goes into that trash can. It needs to be things going into other, other bins and especially those heavy things, the glass, the tin, the cans. Yeah. But it's really important, I have to say, a, a area that people don't think about is that you clean it. If it's contaminated, That's as they right. call it, if it has junk all over, if it's got yogurt all over it or something, it ruins the recyclability of that product. So you have to make sure that what you're putting in that recycling, of course your food waste and can be as dirty as, as anything, yeah. but what you're putting in that recycling bin needs to be pretty clean, fairly clean. It's to be respectful to the next layers within the chain of life. And life is a cycle and a recycling process. So it's just to be respectful to the next person who actually gonna be yes. acting on this recyclable program. So well, congratulations for such leadership Thank you. Anything else you want our guests to know as far as where to go to find more information on, on this specific topic, which which yeah. happens to be one of my favorite. Yeah, really? Okay, yes, great. packaging and, and waste management yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. Well, I will say we have coming up in June for anyone that's kind of in the region, uh, we have coming up in June what's called Napa Thrives. And it's a whole series of events covering precisely these six pillars. We're walking through each of these six pillars with these half day events over the course of three weeks with experts, with really practical implementation advice. And one of those on June 14th is going to be specifically on this topic of waste prevention and green purchasing. And so if you're in the industry and you're really interested in 
tracking the carbon footprint of what you're doing or changing to lighter bottles or trying out some cans or trying out a keg or any of those things, please look up Napa Thrives, napathrives.org and join us for that workshop or any of the workshop in the series. We would love to have you there. So exciting. Well, let's have a toast to Anna for her incredible leadership as well as for all of you who are taking action step by step. The key is to start and then you'll be addicted to making our planet a better place. And remember, we want to leave it in a better shape than the way we found it. So it's our role, it's our step, it's our responsibility to do so. So yes. And cheers to you for understanding that and living that every day. Every yeah. day. Ooh. But it's not going to break. It's a, it's, <laughs> and it's light. Cheers. Cheers.